Hey everyone, we're back here live in Austin at the Linux Foundation Open Source Summit event. Um, this is our third day, but it's, it's technically day two of the event. We, we started on Monday. This is our OWASP portion of, the, of our coverage. I'm really happy to be joined by my friend Andrew Vanderstark. Andrew, welcome. It's good, good to day. see you. And joining Andrew with me is a, a, a new person for me, Steve Springett. Is that good? Steve? Indeed, Alan. Thank you. Also with OWASP. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So what brings OWASP to Open Source Summit? S-bombs. Um, S-bombs. <laughs> um, we worked with um, the US government, in particular Alan Friedman, to um, set up a meeting between the SPDX and Cyclone DX teams. Cyclone DX is OWASP S-bomb standard. It's heavily used in industry. And Steve is our co-leader of the Cyclone DX project. Indeed. Congratulations. Indeed. Cool. Yeah. So. Tell us about the project and, and kind of what, what, you know, what, what's going on with it. Yeah, it's a uh, SBOM standard, uh, purpose-built for a lot of the cybersecurity use cases. Uh, handles license and intellectual property and those types of use cases as well. But it's primarily focused on cybersecurity, and there's a lot of different cybersecurity use cases that, that we support. Um, huge uh, focus on automation, and we've got really good adoption within the security community. Most major SCA vendors already support Cyclone DX today. There's some IS vendors and, and mobile vendors, et cetera, that are supporting the standard. So it's been pretty well adopted thus far. Um, we did some preliminary estimates in uh, December of last year. Uh, conservatively, uh, there's around 100,000 organizations today that have adopted Cyclone DX. That's and great. Um, we have some really interesting data, some, some actual data on the usage of Cyclone DX, which is in the billions today. So it's, uh, it. it's definitely being used in, in mass quantities um, in a large percentage of the population. But even with 100,000 organizations, that's still small in comparison to the millions of organizations that exist. So there's still a lot of growth potential there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 100,000 is an impressive number, though, I got to tell you. Especially with something relative. How long has Cyclone DX been around now? Uh, it was created in 2017. Uh, the oh, first release know. was in 2018. A lot of the research that went into Cyclone DX actually predates all of that going back to 2013 with some of the really early OWASP work that we were doing. Mm. Absolutely. You know, we were talking off camera about this event. I had at uh, RSA with DevSecOps, and we mm. talked a little bit about SMOPs. Two of the people there, two friends, I think Andrew probably knows Chensi Wang. Oh yeah, Chensi. Chensi and Carolyn Wang. Mm. And um, we, we had this discussion around S-bombs and Chensi made a very interesting observation that I haven't heard before. That one of the things that we need to figure out to overcome wider adoption or to you know, enable wider adoption of S-bombs is this notion of IP, right? So in other words, if I give you the recipe to my software, which an S bomb may very well be, what's to stop you from brewing your own? Mm -hmm. Right? And it's fine in open source because in open source, that's kind of the, mm. the way we do things. It's not so fine. Mm. Right. Not open source. Even though the, you know, the not open source software may very well contain a ton of open source in it, as it often does, so, um, I mean, it's still a recipe, it's an IP issue. I think honestly, we do the um, reference implementation for open source. And if open source has then becomes yeah. more trusted than proprietary, the market will follow. So from my perspective, the reality is, is that if we actually demonstrate you can get better security from open source software because of open source, then not only do you have the freedom, you also know that this is somewhat trustworthy. Whereas if you have proprietary software and they don't want to give you the recipe, well, maybe I don't trust that. I can't use that in this particular scenario. Right, and there is a, you know, there's the dis distinction between like the recipe versus the raw ingredients, right? You can look on the back of a Coke can and see the ingredients. But you don't have the My formula. Exactly, exactly. So right. we're not, you know, the, the intellectual property concerns and SBOM can coexist. Mm -hmm. So I've spoken to several folks here the last couple of days around SBOMs and as one would at any security themed conference these days. And, and you know, I, I, what I'm afraid of is the uh, unixation of, of S-bombs, right? Mm. If we have too many standards, too many flavors of S-bombs, 
mm. that aren't necessarily compatible, are we going to have a Unix situation, right, where mm. you need a different application spun up? Mm. You know, it's um, if, if if you look at S bomb, I kind of cons uh, equate it to like an automobile, right? Well, you can have an F one fifty and you can have a Maserati, right? Is one better than the other? It really depends on what you want to use it for, right? And I think SBOM formats today are, are kind of that way. Um, you can use both formats simultaneously. They, they both bring something, um, you know, good to the table. Uh, we believe at OWASP that we bring a lot of the security use cases to the table. That's kind of our, our main focus. Uh, but SPDX brings its, its strengths to the table as well. And, um, you know, organizations can adopt both. And many security vendors can adopt uh, both, and, and they have adopted both. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there are security vendors that uh, can either do one format or the other. Now, in the security space, it's, it's typically Cyclone, uh, because we support a lot of the use cases that you know the other format may not. But um, organizations are, are free to adopt both of these formats, and there is a certain amount of interop between the two. There is. There is to an extent. Um, but if you care about a lot of the other things that are not necessarily common in between the formats, they will in fact be lossy. Mm -hmm. So, so let, let's let's do some table setting if you don't mind for our audience. Mm -hmm. So, Cyclone DX is the OWASP standard. Mm -hmm. Right. SPDX, right? Who? who that's the Linux op Foundation. Op Linux Foundation Open SSF. Mm -hmm. Open SSF. Yeah. I was afraid I gave an extra S in there somehow. But Open SSF, that's their standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm reminded in the early days of RSS feeds, we had RSS1, RSS2, Atom, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it was a real pain in the butt, mm -hmm. right? Because you wanted to get an RSS reader to read all of your blogs or whatever. And, mm -hmm. Depending what RSS version they used, it, it didn't work till uh, a uh, oh, feed burner mm -hmm. came along and it mm. kind of normalized right. RSS feeds for everyone. Mm. Wound up selling to Google for like a hundred million dollars with no revenue. Mm. And uh, Dick Kosla was the founder of that. He went on to be tw uh, Twitter CEO for a while. Yeah. But um, do we need a feed burner? There are yeah. translation. Um, Tools. I mean, I hate it to hear that we works. lose stuff in the in the oh. source, stuff. Yeah. I mean, we're not ready to announce much about this meeting, but that was the reason okay. the meeting. That the reason why the meeting existed is to have a frank and open discussion between the two teams, and we really thank the Linux Foundation for inviting us here. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. So you heard it right here first. Stay <laughs> tuned. I think we're going to see something hopefully mm. come out of this that'll help us all mm. as we. Kind of, kind of rally behind maybe one standard or, or more interoperability depending on whichever standard it is you want to pick, mm. for for your S bomb mm -hmm. uh, needs. Now you mentioned a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. which boggles my mind. A hundred thousand organizations using it yeah. already. What do you think the actual addressable market is, though? How many? I, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be in the millions. Um, out of the 100,000 organizations that we have know have adopted it, we know that around 202 million components are represented in Cyclone DX every single month. And the way one tool specifically that was measured uh, that analyzes and consumes these, that equates to about 20 billion checks for components with known vulnerabilities every single month. That's just the data that we know about. And again, it's, it's, it's a substantial number. It's big enough to know that this stuff works. It works in mass. And we can operationalize this w without a lot of effort. Um, but it's still small in comparison to the millions of organizations yeah. that exist. And the interesting part about the folks that are adopting a lot of this, um, you know, the early adopters in this space, what I find uh, in the OWASP community is that the majority of them are using it for internal best practices. Yeah. They're not necessarily sharing these things outward. Well, it's yet. only maybe, I, certainly within the last year with the White House and everything, right. <clears throat> that we've seen this light where you know, it's become a thing, right? I think before it was basically for internal practice and internal right. teams. I think it'll really become commonplace and, and you know, de facto mm. when 
end user organizations, when I go to buy software mm. from you or I go to consume mm. software from you, I say, I, I need an SBOM, even if it's for my compliance, governance and right. stuff, I, I need I think your honestly, SBOM. that's exactly right. And I think the US government here has a huge role. FedRAMP improved the cloud security for so many people. Absolutely. And it didn't say you have to buy AWS. It didn't say you have to buy Azure. No, no, it just said to be FedRAMP certified. Yeah, and that's why I think SBOMs need to go. And I think, honestly, the, dr the driving factor here is the EO, and that's what we're working on, is how do we get the features we don't have in Cyclone DX? How do we get the interop so people who use both don't lose data? Right. And that's, I think, a really good thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. Agree 100%. Um, no pressure. But when do you think we might see some kinds of announcements or, or moving on this? Well, I'm hoping that we'll have a joint announcement by the beginning of next week. We've made Beautiful. some um, really good commitments, and I think, honestly, um, the well, next part is to actually do the work. <laughs> well, that's always the easy part. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, well, I'll tell you this. I am back in our offices next week. I'd love to see an announcement, or maybe we can grab someone from Linux Foundation and, and yep. one or both of you on to discuss this further. Mm -hmm. We'll reach out to grab Alan Friedman too. That would be a great panel there on SBOMs. Oh, I think so. I mean, right um, Kate Stewart is the, the lady you need to talk to. All right, I'll reach yep. out to her. Hey, beyond SBOMs, Andrew, what mm -hmm. else happening with OWASP? Well, we have invalid bylaws and we're gonna need all of our members to vote for it. And so um, we're actually working on a replacement bylaw package at the moment that gives the members what they want um, because we need the members to actually approve it. That's exciting. So if you remember out there, go vote for this. You know, the big, we, I, I see this in my homeowners association. No one goes to the meetings, but no one will even fill out the proxy forms yep. so that you have a quorum to get things done, a quorum mm -hmm. to get things done. So don't, don't let that happen here. Get the OWASP bylaws passed. Yep. Yep. So we're right. hoping to do that in conjunction with our next director's election. Very cool. Hey, guys, thank you both for the, you know, people don't realize it's a lot of work working for an OWASP, a Linux foundation. And just because they have the nonprofit name on there doesn't mean everyone, A, works for free, or B, that people don't really bust their butts working on these things. So mm -hmm. thank you both for what you're doing. And, you know, I, I know how hard you are on it, Andrew. And, mm -hmm. um, Steve, it sounds like you're doing a bang-up job, so thank you. Try. 